Next is Les Ernest. We're going to be talking a little bit about how they, what accidentally started. A, mod a modest title, how John McCarthy accidentally started uniting the world. We're going to give you only five minutes, <laughs> as usual. <laughs> okay. As you know, in order to develop an interactive network such as the internet, you, have to fir you first need interactive computers. In the 1950s, the only way to do that was to let people use computers one at a time. However, computers of that era typically cost a million dollars uh, each, which made that approach rather impractical. As a result of Moore's law, the cost of computers came down enough by the 1980s so that personal computers began to be used widely. Thus, unless something else happened in the meantime, the development of computer networking would have started by the end of the 1980s, about 20 years after the, the time it had actually happened. How did it start, start earlier? It was an accident followed by an insight. The Sage Air Defense System, which was started by MIT in the 1950s, and which I helped design, had to process radar data in real time so as to track aircraft and direct manned interceptors and missiles toward incoming bombers. It turned out to be a technological marvel that included packetized data network that spanned North America. It used large screen geographical displays with point point-and-click interfaces using light, light guns, a scheme that was reinvented about 15 years later using the mouse. Since each of the 23 SAGE direction centers had to respond to requests from up to 150 operators, uh, that was uh, put on in the same processing loop as the radar data, which accidentally created a kind of time-sharing system. Everyone who got to see SAGE in action agreed that even though the response time was rather slow, about three seconds, that's slow by modern standards anyway, typically uh, th this was a much better way to interact with the computer than submitting jobs for batch processing and getting results hours to days later, which was the general practice then. Meanwhile, Hollywood picked up on the SAGE display environment consisting of a dimly lit facility with large screen displays. They've shown that as the right way, kind of place to run a war ever since. However, SAGE was a special purpose system and could not uh, even be used to interactively develop and debug new programs during normal operations. Many of us scratched our heads about how to make a more versatile system but nobody came up with an answer until John McCarthy wrote a memo on January 1st, 1959 that told how to do it. His motivation was not to revolutionize the world of computing, but to find a more efficient way to conduct his research in artificial intelligence. That note inspired a number of groups in the MIT community to develop time-sharing systems, and in short order, short order, four such systems had been demonstrated including the one uh, done by Ed, Fredkin, and, and John. The first commercial time-sharing system, the DEC PDB-6, was designed by one of John's former students, Alan Kotak. And the first display-based time-sharing system, called Zeus, was initiated by John after he came to Stanford in 1962. It was then taken over by Patrick Soupies for research in computer-aided instruction. It is possible that someone other than John might, might have eventually figured out how to do general purpose time sharing, but it's not clear how long that uh, would have taken. Um, I became the Stanford University representative on the startup committee for ARPANET, the first general purpose computer network, which worked exclusively with time sharing systems at various academic institutions and became operational in 1971, not 1969 as commonly reported. John had reservations about ARPANET inasmuch it was billed as a facility for sharing resources and he worried about others swooping in and gobbling up our computer. However, when he got to collaborate with others via email, he, come, he came to love it. 
A graduate student at UCLA named Vint Cerf helped put ARPANET together, then joined the Stanford faculty and together with Bob Kahn developed the internet protocols that were then widely implemented and beat the competition so as to create the internet that we know today. Vint's Stanford research project was funded under the same ARPA contract as the Stanford AI lab. With the introduction of personal computers in the 1980s, people began to connect directly to the internet. Many seem to think this was a fundamental change, but I disagree. Since the core of the network continued to be time-sharing systems, which did all the heavy lifting, that continued through the development of the World Wide Web in the 1990s. However, by then we were shortening the names of time-sharing systems to servers. Servers carried on through the development of services such as Yahoo, Google, and Amazon. More recently, the term cloud computing has been introduced as part of a pretense that a new kind of service is being offered. However, it is actually plain old time-sharing under, an, under an, another name. Overall, the important new idea introduced by John McCarthy in 1959 unpredictably initiated a major revolution in how people interact with computers and through subsequent development of networking with each other. Thanks. Thank you.